Are you at a crossroads in your life? Are you? <laughs> Are you wondering what's next and hoping it'll be a step in the right direction? I, I don't know. Welcome to Your Next Bold Move. Our show is all about helping you take your next step, whether it's career or relationships or life in general. Second acts do exist. Second chances do exist. And so stay tuned and let's explore together what's next for you. Hi, and welcome to Your Next Bold Move. My name is Wendy Kaplan. Our TV show is about providing you with inspiration and information to help you figure out what's next for you and then to make that bold move. Bold moves can be personal or professional, but whatever it is for you, let us help you get started and get supported. Today's show is focused on entrepreneurial thought and action, and our guest today is Len Schlesinger. Len is president of Babson College in Wellesley, Massachusetts, a widely recognized world-leading educational institution for entrepreneurship, and he's the co-author of a new book just published by the Harvard Business Review called Just Start, How to Succeed at Work and Life in an Increasingly Unpredictable World. Len was the former vice chairman and chief operating officer of the Limited Brands, and he's a brilliant thinker on thinking entrepreneurially, entrepreneurially, which is, I think, perfect timing for many of us, many of you who might be thinking about starting a business or wondering how to even go about starting some venture of your own. So, Len, thanks for being here today. Oh, it's great to be with I'm you. I'm so excited to have this conversation with you because well, for many reasons. One, I think you're brilliant in terms of entrepreneurship. Well, I'll stay for an hour now. <laughs> well, we could put two shows yeah. after um, instead of just one. And as the president uh, of the world's leading entrepreneurship, school of entrepreneurship, um, Babson College, what would you recommend to people? I mean, this is the place people come, mm -hmm. right, when they're students to learn how to be an entrepreneur. But you've been an entrepreneur for mm -hmm. years. So what would you recommend to people who are thinking about this? Well, a lot of the conversation that we're going to have today is going to appear to be counterintuitive, um, particularly in the context of all of the books and all of the advice that are available to people to actually continue to think about it, to think about it, to find markets, to segment markets, to develop robust business plans, to then figure out how to get access to capital and stuff like that. Yeah. No, 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 stop thinking, all right? Just stop thinking. Because in this environment, oftentimes, thinking becomes an excuse uh, and generates the paralysis that actually keeps people from engaging in entrepreneurial behavior. Right. So if you want to understand what it's like to be an entrepreneur, for God's sake, be an entrepreneur and do something and try something and take a step and get started uh, and see what you can learn from the process of getting started. Uh, we all get to listen to all of these hysterical stories about these entrepreneurs who uh, you know, spent years trying to find market niches and then spend another set of years being able to leverage all of their family assets and then hanging from a mountaintop, uh, <laughs> you know, wait for their customer to come in, then they hit it big, they write a big book uh, telling their life story all over again, and then what ends up happening is you and I hear that life story and say, it couldn't be me. Um, so, I don't have the money, um, I don't have the big idea, I don't have the context, I don't have the context, I don't have the network, I don't have all of these things. So there are a million ways that I can exclude myself from entrepreneurial behavior, uh, and there's only one way to include myself in entrepreneurial behavior, and that's to act. Take a step. Take a step. Get started. Right. So um, you don't need to have, you do need a business plan and you do need some money at some point. At some point in the process, right. you have to have clarity about a launch plan and an operational strategy. That's not at the start, okay? Right. Uh, we have a venture accelerator here at Babson uh, that over the last several years replaced our traditional uh, incubator. And in the incubator, we'd have the normal business planning competition, and we'd have lots of people spending months in their courses, dotting I's and crossing T's, and refining 40 pages of PowerPoint slides and, and 30 pages of Excel spreadsheets uh, to make sets of assumptions about what the world is going to be like in 2017, 2018, 2019, right. to identify the acquirer of the business as if they actually have a business. Uh, and most of it is nonsense. And in fact, we had a portfolio of faculty here that spent 10 years studying what happened with all of those business plans. And very few of them had any relationship to ongoing businesses. And also what we discovered is it tended to generate an unrealistically high level of commitment to ideas that weren't so good. 
Yeah. And so, and quite honestly, the process of developing the plan got in the way of the process of developing the idea. Uh, because the way, you spent your time developing the plan and putting together all that. As instead. if you know that it's going to work. Right. As if you know who your customers are. As if you know what their response is going to be. Right. The only way you're going to know who your customers are is to go to you and go to you and go to you and see if you're interested. Right. The only way in which you're going to know how you're going to respond is to go to you and you and you and see if you'll buy. Right. Uh, and if we're trying to actually start a small entrepreneurial venture, that message of stop thinking and start doing is absolutely at the core of what it's going to take to actually learn what you need to do to actually build something substantive. Right. You need to test your ideas, you need to see who will buy, you need to see who will endorse. Then and only then do you need to obsess about how to make it, how to develop it, how to launch it, and how to build the economic model. That's great. So you've written a book with Charlie Kiefer that yep. we talked about last month and Just Start and which works people through the process yeah. of how they actually do And it. by the way, that's the second book on the same topic that I Charlie and that. Paul and I did because we just got started. We did a bunch of lectures and a bunch of conversations. We tape recorded all of those. Uh, we actually turned it into a draft manuscript. We edited it. We designed it on our own. We did a cover. Uh, we self-published. And lo and behold, uh, it attracted an interesting audience. And that interesting and interested audience actually came to the attention of traditional publishers who then put us through the traditional process of being able uh, to produce this book, Just Start. Just Start would have never happened if we didn't actually just start. Right. And to be thinking about the book, and in fact, you actually didn't start out to write a book. We had no intention of writing right. this book. Right. Uh, we were going to write a cutesy book about thinking creatively and thinking differently. Yeah. Uh, and the reality is we wrote a book about stop thinking. <laughs> it's so fascinating, yeah. isn't it? So, Which, is, by the way, is different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, it is. So you're an entrepreneur at heart. You've got a long history before becoming president of Babson of being involved in very large business ventures. Mm -hmm. So how does how does the thinking stuff that we were talking about and just starting apply to some other businesses either that you've seen other people run um, or that you've been involved in yourself? Well, we have all of these marvelous stories that you end up uh, seeing on television, mm -hmm. you know, on the Bloomberg specials about entrepreneurs, et cetera, so forth. And it's like these ideas kind of came out of the thin air or people have been working these ideas for years. You know, Starbucks, in reality, was born uh, out of the 1,465 customers who really didn't like Howard Schultz's first venture, Il Giornale. Right, yeah. tell us that story. Uh, That's a great story. And so the story. reality of that is when you look at a place like Starbucks, everybody visualizes by the time the books were all done, it was, you know, this man had this deep passion uh, for creating an authentic Italian espresso bar in the United States. And so he went off from Seattle to Italy and had a vision, and Starbucks was born. And the reality is, like many of us, this was an entrepreneur uh, who actually cared deeply about coffee, um, who actually developed a robust business plan at a terrible time in the market for actually being able to attract funds for coffee, because mm -hmm. uh, coffee was experiencing 20 years of its market share declines. Uh, and that, in fact, cola beverage is becoming the preferred source of caffeination for young people at this point in time. So it's not the time to start a sophisticated coffee business. Right. But by George, he was absolutely committed to it. Uh, the, the, in Just New, Nancy Kane, a, histori a historian, uh, documented that he took this business plan to 252 people, and the vast majority of them thought it was completely idiotic. No, so he you. couldn't yeah. raise anywhere near the amount of money that he had fantasized would be required to get started in this grand vision of what happened. So he started something much smaller. Uh, he started a chain called Il Giornale, a chain, one unit chain. It had nonstop opera music. It had a menu that was completely in Italian. Uh, it had baristas wearing tuxedo outfits. It was really authentic in all of those respects. Uh, but because he couldn't raise enough money, it was stand up. You know, so when you think about the dimensions of Starbucks today as the third place with comfortable right, seating, right. you know, its pre progenitor, uh, Il Giornale, wasn't anything like that. So what did he discover the first five days? You know what? People, by and large, they might like opera in the moment, but a mass population doesn't want opera from open to close. Right. No one could have predicted, who in their right mind could have predicted uh, 
that Americans, and now a global population, would prefer to learn a completely artificial language. It's true. Okay, rather than speak Italian. Okay, so no one wanted to go into this place and have to speak Italian to order uh, authentic beverages. Uh, and quite honestly, when you pay that much money for a cup of espresso-based beverage, you really don't want to stand. Okay, particularly right. if you're coming to and from work, or you'd like to have a comfortable experience to listen to the opera music. And the baristas, okay, in the early stages of uh, cappuccino espresso machines, the splashback literally would ruin their uniform within <laughs> five minutes of the start uh -huh. of the day. So, uh, so essentially, baristas are miserable five minutes into it. Customers don't want to hear the opera music. They no don't want to speak Italian. Sit. There's no place to sit. Right. No surprise. They didn't love the place. Yeah. Okay? Now, what do you do when, in fact, you discover they don't love it? Well, if you're deeply wedded to a plan, you suck your thumb. Right. Okay? And you get morose and depressed okay, about the failure of your plan. If you're a successful serial entrepreneur, if you're someone committed to just getting started and Figuring moving it on, out, right? you, just, you figure that the 1,465 upset customers who didn't really enjoy your place are the source of all of the wisdom for what comes next. Right. You have to talk to them. And so my argument very simply is that Starbucks was born of the co-creation activities mm. of Howard Schultz and a collection of customers in what otherwise would have been defined as a failure. Absolutely. Okay? But really, um, if you actually thought about the reality of his experience of recognizing up front, this isn't working the way I fantasized, okay? Um, his ability to turn that uh, into the data and the support and the commitment of this population of people who at least expressed interest in paying $4 for an espresso-based beverage right. was really the source of the wisdom that created both the concept and the market. Right. So he started with one plan right. that he was pretty committed to in the time, saw, gosh, this isn't working like I hoped, and made some shifts. You know what? If anybody tells you the <laughs> truth... And there's a lot of retrospective analysis about what I'm goes sure. on in this space. But if anybody really tells you the truth, I honestly don't believe that anybody's operating business looks anything like the plan they developed. I would agree with and you. And so, uh, so the reality is you can look at that and say, oh, my God, this is a complete failure. Right. Okay? Uh, or you can basically say, isn't it wonderful that you actually managed to quickly divorce yourself from a plan that became obvious it wasn't working. Yeah, okay? what is that saying? Fail, fast, cheap? Yeah, well, you know, right. and again, the, everybody has different ways of talking about it. So over the past several years, it was all about fail fast, fail off, and fail cheap, okay? And the reality is, you know, your viewers who are listening to this conversation, you know what, when we start talking about failure, that's another opportunity for them to turn off. Basically say, you know what, I don't want to actually get into a situation uh, where there's a reasonably high probability that you're going to fail. Well, there's a reasonably high probability that your first idea is not going to be your best idea uh, and that your first venture doesn't have a high probability of success. So I laugh about the people who want to do their own restaurants. There's a 97% failure rate in new restaurants in the first year. So, you know, there's well, only 3% probability of success. Right. right. Even your book, you told me that you were starting to, uh, to you've written a, another book. Right. And, but that, once you wrote that, you thought, wait a minute, this is really what we want to be talking about. Yeah, next. as we got by the end of chapter one and said, no, there's an opportunity to do something else, right. right? And quite honestly, from Action Trumps Everything You Just Start, it was an opportunity to do something else. Right. And it probably wouldn't surprise mm -hmm. you that Charlie and Paul and I have already sent out a new draft manuscript of course you have. for what comes next because the opportunity to engage with people who are both reading the book and working off the book provides the insight and, uh, and the opportunities for continuing the conversation with people. But we started with this whole thing about failure and there's an opportunity to turn off the television, right? Yeah. I don't want to fail. Right. You know, I live in a world where you know, if I came home with a 95, <laughs> my father would ask, where's the other five points, okay? Uh, and, uh, and everybody is deathly afraid of having something not turn out the way in which they'd planned or the way in which they'd fantasized about. Well, most of life doesn't come through the way you fantasize about it. And so why don't we accept that as a reality? So for years, we talked about it in terms of failure. You know, our experience now spending years talking about failure is it doesn't generate a very compelling audience. That in fact, right. several years ago, there was a failure conference called FailCon in San Francisco, and it didn't work. Okay? <laughs> uh, and so we're saying, you know, maybe there's another language we can use. 
So Charlie, my partner in this venture, um, uh, several years ago started talking about, well, suppose you take a step and it really doesn't quite turn out the way in which you expect it. Okay? Uh, well, you know, you assess current reality and quite likely you've just learned something that nobody else knows. Right. So one whole piece of it is to basically say this is an opportunity for learning. The new language, the new language of entrepreneurship is you pivot. Okay. Pivot. Yeah, and essentially Pivot. it says nothing ever ends up the way in which you think it's going to end up. And so the reality is uh, you pivot. And so uh, people are studying business plans, people are studying business ventures, and all of a sudden it hasn't got a stigmatized language system of failure. Yeah, okay? that's good. And the romanticized, you've <laughs> learned something that nobody else knows. Right. It is, pivot is an inevitable process that one goes through in their life. Is that okay. your next title of your next book? Well, actually, it's funny. You know, this will be on several months after my commencement speech. Okay? Yes. Uh, so I can tell you what I'm going to talk about without actually stealing the thunder. And so the title of my commencement speech this year is The Courage to Pivot. Oh, that's and great. it takes a portfolio of undergraduate and graduate students okay, who came to Babson absolutely clear about what they wanted to do mm -hmm. okay, and who discovered at some point in the process that they didn't want to do it. Uh, and so once you discover that everything you dreamt about, fantasized about, or planned for wasn't what you want to do, what do you do with that? And for a lot of people, that's a demoralizing, yeah. paralyzing story. Yeah. Uh, what we have is a portfolio of four or five undergraduates and four or five graduate students who really turned it into magic, okay? Uh, and, uh, and ended up, in their pivot, okay, uh, ending up doing extraordinary things that none of them could have ever, ever, ever dreamt about before they got in the middle of the day-to-day -day in an experience in an environment like this. You know, and, and truly for any of us who, at any point in life, you cannot predict what your future is going to look like, period. Well, you know, when I retired from Limited Brands as a Vice Chairman and Chief Operating Officer, it was the end of 2007, okay? Uh, the one thing I was absolutely certain about was uh, I was not going back to academia. And the thing that was even more certain <laughs> was I certainly wasn't going back to academic administration. Okay? <laughs> uh, and here I am just finishing my fourth year. So, uh, so sometimes, sometimes uh, there's this marvelous opportunity to live, okay, uh, and actually make hay out of the opportunities and conversations that emerge. Yeah. and not be wedded, literally not be wedded uh, to a detailed plan, particularly in an environment that is un uncertain uh, as the environment we're in today. That's great. So what excites you today yeah. about entrepreneurship? What gets you uh, what, like, so what excited? What excites me is it's the ability for millions, if not billions of people uh, to begin to take action on their aspirations right? and, and, and to, not, uh, to not paralyze themselves into either believing they have to lead a scripted life, okay, with that script either coming from parents or friends or books or school, okay, uh, and to have the enthusiasm and the commitment to actually pursue things that are just interesting in the moment, and also fundamentally recognizes that there are billions of people in the world who without entrepreneurship in today's world can't live, okay? And so the issue is can we in fact, okay, develop mechanisms that enable them to use these tools in new and different ways to live better. Um, you know, the story of Muhammad Yunus and microfinance uh, celebrates what he was able to do with $28, okay? That was a long time ago. We know a lot more about microfinance right. and we know a lot more about the processes by which people can engage in both necessity and opportunity-driven entrepreneurship. Uh, and uh, he coined a phrase, about uh, seven or eight years ago that said, we are all entrepreneurs, only too few people get to practice it. You know, my ambition is to actually build a world uh, where everybody is comfortable with the notion of acting on their own behalf or the behalf of the ideas that they care deeply about uh, through just starting. Through just starting, that's great. So. What's next for you? I don't know. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, it, the coolest thing about this is, is uh, one of our former faculty members who when we started getting into all of this work, 
uh, was talking about the action process and said she always told her students, uh, it doesn't matter what you're going to do, what matters is what you're going to do next, okay? Uh, and that's what you should really spend time uh, uh, Thinking, focusing in yeah. on, what you're going to do next. <laughs> what you're going to do in the absolute point of a lifetime, it will sort itself out. Right. But focus next, on that next step. next step. So the reality is I have lots of different steps. I have the next step of what are Charlie and Paul going to do with me on the process of picking up where Just Start leaves off and right. figuring out what comes next there. Right. How does that evolve into the ability to actually build an influence network to touch as many people as is physically possible? I happen to be the president of college. Um, how do I leverage the asset of being the number one school in the world for entrepreneurship education to continue to evolve the most extraordinary place-based educational model for our undergraduates that we can possibly do and to use the learning and the capacity that comes from that to figure out other populations we can reach and other people we can influence uh, with our knowledge and awareness. So there, there is a picture. There is a picture for me uh, about a world uh, that is increasingly touched uh, by the tools that are available to people to take action on things that they care about. It is a world that is able to uh, address not only issues of economics, uh, but issues of human outcomes and sustainability-oriented outcomes. Uh, here at Babson, we were one of the first schools to endorse the UN Principles for Responsible Management Education mm -hmm. to recognize that there is a new capitalism that is able to address the issues of economic, human, and sustainability outcomes simultaneously uh, rather than sequentially. So I'm driven by a set of principles, and I'm driven by a set of beliefs I am incredibly opportunistic, okay, uh, uh, in terms of what comes next will be largely driven by, by what shows up in my inbox or, right. or opportunities that I and a collection of like-minded people can manufacture at any given point in time. Right, which is exactly the point of all of this, mm -hmm. right? To see, um, as Charlie also talked about last month, to see what you really care about, what you're driven by, you said your beliefs, um, things that matter to you, right. and then what are the opportunities in front of and you? And to recognize that you know, long-term plans in an uncertain environment are just nonsense. Right. Now we've written that, and we've done. We've actually gotten uh, a lot of attention and a lot of annoyance out of people who believe uh, that life can be entirely planned. Yes. Uh, so in that scenario, we actually talked about you know the silly question uh, of where do you see yourself five years from now. Right. Well, the reality is. Why don't you tell me what it would be like if you had that interview at Blockbuster two years ago? Okay? You know, where do you see yourself five years from now? And you know, the obligatory answer is I'd like to make a managerial move, I'd like to grow with the organization. Well, you know, if you grew with that organization, you wouldn't have a job today. Okay? Uh, so the issue becomes one of increasingly, um, at the same time Just Start came out, Reid Hoffman, one of the founders of LinkedIn, uh, wrote a book called The Startup of You. And what he does mm, is it really in tandem with what we talk about, essentially say we need to understand that in today's environment, everybody, everybody uh, has a responsibility to construct and live a more entrepreneurial life. Okay? And that in fact, okay, uh, entrepreneurship is a necessary life skill. Now there are a lot of traditional academics who are deeply offended uh, by expanding the definition of entrepreneurship uh, to what we call entrepreneurship of all kinds at Babson, but yes. increasingly people are using entrepreneurship with all sorts of labels. We celebrate that. We think it's just wonderful. If people can absolutely bring the capacity to find and make opportunities as they walk down the street, uh, why can't we call that entrepreneurship? Why can't we be inclusive? Okay rather than having Be hero this really worship private you know thing hero that worship that's can, private right. that locks us all out right. that again nobody can have you know that again to. has us turn on the tv in the middle of the night and after reading you know re after reading steve jobs autobiography and spending a half an hour you know thinking about mark zuckerberg's hoodie uh, allows <laughs> me to say is just not in the domain of anything i can ever consider you know what both of those are extraordinary people uh, they were extraordinarily they have an extraordinary impact okay yeah. but the reality it's not is your way. for the vast majority right. of us the way you get good is to practice 
and the way you practice is to take the next step. Right, and practice the things that you're good at. It's all about each of us. And, and develop matters. things that you care about. Right. Okay. I think uh, that's the hardest yeah. part, Len, is having, um, being able to identify what really matters to yeah. you and what you care about most. I mean, most people say, you know, my family, my health, right. you know, my, I don't know, those are usually right. the top two things. Right. Beyond that, they're like, I'm not I quite don't sure. know. Right. And, so and the reality is, quite honestly, is for a lot of people, they've been excluded from the process of actually thinking about what they might want to do. It's all programmed. Right? Yes. Life is all programmed. You know, if you take the standard middle class, upper middle class upbringing, it's you, you go to the right preschool, you end up in the right kindergarten, you have the right developmental experiences, you do the right after school things, you take the right standardized tests, right. and you demonstrate your capacity as a human being by being able to stand up, raise your hand, get called on, and recite the things that we already know correctly. Right. Okay? Right. Uh, and, uh, and there's a marvelous editorial in the Journal of Cell Biology, a, a magazine that I'm sure that none of your viewers uh, are going <laughs> to pay attention to, um, that essentially says, you know, instead of celebrating, uh, raise, reciting things we already know, why don't we raise our hand, okay, revel in our ignorance and use our ignorance and curiosity to make great discoveries. Okay? And so, so what we try to spend a lot of time on here at Babson, as well as the arguments we make in the book, is usually you're going to get juiced about something that you and nobody else knows. And so notice where you're juiced. Yeah, notice where you're juiced. Yeah, what um, grabs your attention. Take a step to see if you can actually figure some things out uh, and recognize at the core the great breakthroughs, whether it's in an entrepreneurial venture or a family dynamic, usually come from tackling a question that nobody knows the answer to, that you have actually energy, energy and desire to, to take a step towards on. It. Yeah. yeah, it's great. So in the last minute we have left, what would you like to leave our viewers with? What one brilliant pearl of wisdom. Well, you know, you've imposed a great burden that it has to be brilliant, okay? So <laughs> if it has to be brilliant, we'll just call it a day and I'll shut down, okay? Uh, but but the, you know, the simplest thing from my perspective is to end where we started which is that uh, I'm the president of a college that has an entire uh, portion of the college which is devoted to thinking great thoughts. And there's nothing wrong with that uh, in an environment where we can predict the future based on current reality or the past. That is increasingly not the environment that most people find themselves in. We actually coined a phrase yesterday we were playing with saying, we're living increasingly in a pink slip economy, okay? And so when you're living in a pink slip economy, uh, you better be able to take responsibility for yourself and your future and not rely on all of the historical support networks that existed in the world or that you fantasized existed. And the only way you can do that is to just, just start. start. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us. Lynn. Enormous fun. Look forward to engaging with you again. Thanks. Thanks for watching today. You just had a chance to hear Len Schlesinger, president of Babson College and co-author of the newly published book by Harvard Business Review called Just Start, which outlines step-by-step how to take action and embrace uncertainty and create the future. If you want to buy this book or know more, know more about this topic, you can go to Amazon.com. And if you're someone who would like some more information on leadership development in particular, we have a few resources on our website to help you, www.visionquestconsulting.com. Thanks for joining us today. And in addition to the resources and ideas shared by Len, you can go online to our other website at www.themagicparties.com where you can get some free support and inspiration. Thanks to our uh, crew and thanks for joining us today. Uh, and thank you especially uh, to our guest, Len Schlesinger, for being here. And thanks to you, our listeners. You are meant to go forth in the world to use your gifts and talents and to have a little fun exploring what's next inside of you, just waiting to burst forth. Join us next time as we continue to inspire each other to make our next bold moves. Have a good day.